Hello, we're going to continue our discussion about the coins of Bar Kochva. Specifically, we're going to discuss the motifs on the Bar Kochva Sela, the large silver coin of Bar Kochva. Now, on the top of the Sela, over the temple, the obverse is a depiction of the temple, we have what looks like a star. On some of the coins, it looks like a plus or a cross. Uh, some actually look similar to a rosette. Other coins don't have the star, but they have wavy lines. Now these lines have been alternatively described as well as either wavy lines, decorations, a cornice, or perhaps clouds, or representing the presence of God. Further down we have this strange uh, center with two dots, and then on the bottom we have what's been described as a balustrade or a fence and there are different writers about what that was enclosing, the outer parts, the inner parts of the temple and so on. In March 2010 I wrote an article in the Seletar describing what these motifs were, in most cases simplifying these theories. There's also a photograph there which shows what parts of the cella corresponded to what other parts in the temple. Some of this research is based upon a book by Rabbi Zalman Koren. He suggested that the what looks like a star on the coin is actually the chandelier which was donated by Queen Helena of Eriabin, known as Hilnia Malk. She was a convert to Judaism. And this was a very significant addition to the temple as this chandelier, the lights reflected, were seen from very far. He mentions also the possibility that it was a reflective pain. However, looking at the coin and at the rosette and so on, somehow it never hit home that this might be a chandelier. We're coming close to the holiday of Sukkot. And during the holiday of Sukkot, we sit in Sukkot, which are um, huts. And that's to remind us of our sojourn in the desert. At any rate, we like to decorate our huts and make them really, really nice. It was several years ago they, that I was going with my son, looking for some nice decoration for our sukkah or our hut. And I found a place that sold some nice tapestries. I purchased one of them. And that year, as I, as I was sitting in my sukkah, and I was just looking at the tapestry, which was opposite me, it struck me. This tapestry was made by a modern artist. Now, there's nothing scientific about it. I, I cannot say that the depiction is totally accurate. However, when you look at the artist's depiction, right there in the center, is this tremendous twinkle. And it's doubtful that this artist ever studied the coins of Bar Kochva or perhaps even the temple. And yet he put that twinkle there. And, some, and it dawned on me that all these descriptions that I had seen, rosette, star, plus, cross, even lily, were none other than various artists' depiction of the twinkle of the light of the rays that emanated from the chandelier of uh, Helene Amalka, of Queen Helene. Going further down, and this is not in the article, are the two, the Talmud, the Gemara in Menachot, describes the staves, the two poles that held the ark, and it describes them as not puncturing but poking through the curtain leading to the Holy of Holies, side by side. And this is exactly what we see depicted on the cella. Finally, what's known as the uh, fence or the balustrade is actually not a fence at all. If we take a look, at the temple, okay, let's say this is the entrance to the temple. Now the entrance was, the entrance to the sanctuary was facing the west. The Holy of Holies was on the west. Okay, so you'd be looking from east to west. 
and then the north would be this way, and the south would be that way. Now, the sanctuary had 12 steps leading to it. So you had 12 going from east to west. You had 12 going from north to south, and similarly from south to north. Now, what would somebody that was standing on the outside, in the courtyard of the Israelites, or the courtyard of the women, see? Well, he actually would not see what we see here, because the altar was here. And the altar was rather large, 64 cubits in length, with the ram, which is over 100 feet. So the altar, which was set off a little bit from the temple wall, would have been something like this. And it would have cut off these steps completely, and much of these steps, so that somebody viewing from here would basically only see as a complete set of steps, the 12 steps going from north to south. Now if we look at the coin of our Kochba, we find that there are never more than 12 steps. That seems to have been the design. Now sometimes, on some tight dyes or flans, we may only have 10 or 11, but never more than 12. And so this seems to be a representation, a schematic representation on a schematically designed coin of the 12 steps. Finally, let's get to what's called the, what are called the wavy lines. They're actually not wavy lines at all. Now in the article, with the permission of Amphora, we put a picture of an ossuary from approximately that time period which shows these so-called wavy lines. They're a vine. Now it just so happens to be that a vine was hung at the entrance to the sanctuary. Now, people used to come, whoever wanted to donate to the temple, they would hang golden clusters of grapes. After a while, those clusters would be taken off, and people would bring more clusters of grapes. But at any rate, this is the vine that depicts what was actually hanging over the sanctuary. Now, we've gotten several other artifacts to show you, which also depict the vine in the same way. Here is a South Italian cantharos, which predates Bar Kochba by about 300 years. And as you see, this is not wavy lines, but it's actually a depiction of a vine, just as it is seen on the Bar Kochba coin. Now, of course, the Bar Kochba coin did not have room for grapes, and as a schematic, angular kind of photo, angular kind of design, I should say, actually uh, did not put grapes on the coin, but clearly that is what is meant by the vine. Here we have something, a rear vessel, closer to the time of Bar Kochba, about 200 to 100 BCE. It may be hard to see because it's like a monotone, but once again we see the wavy lines representing the vine. We will conclude for today. I thank you for watching and hope you enjoyed.